would look at previously used CPA questions that were released by the AI CPA. Those questions cover the reg section of the exam. Those questions are for real. They may or may not appear in the future, but the concepts and the way the questions are asked, you may see them on the actual exam day. So you want to be familiar with those questions, be comfortable answering them, be comfortable with the terms, be comfortable with the concepts, because surely you're going to see them again. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lecture. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including hundreds of CPA questions. On my website, I have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice, true false, exercises, which are quasi CPA simulations, and 2,000 plus CPA questions. Please check out my website if you are serious about passing the exam. Let's take a look at the first question. Which of the following circumstances generally would cause a, dis would cause a discharge of contractual duties by operation of law? Well, simply put, this is a business law question. They're asking us, under what circumstances you don't have to perform? Simply put, you are discharged of your contractual duties. But specifically, they say contractual duties by operation of law. And let's take a look at the answers. And here we have four different answers. And you have to understand the answers. In other words, you have to understand the answers in order to apply them, in order to apply them. Like this, say this is a remembering and understanding. I'd say this is closer to application, but we'll look at it in a moment. First is novation. First is novation. Um, so what is novation? Well, novation is a form of a discharge. Okay, so this is a discharge of contractual duties. Okay, so far so good. Is it by operation of law? No. How does novation work? I'll tell you what happened. When I, when I went to school, my third year, I went the first two years to a community college. The third year, I applied to a four-year school, which is called Bloomsburg University. But I applied a little bit late, so I was accepted. So when I went, well, after I was accepted, I was excited. So I went down, I went up actually to Bloomsburg, the town, and I was looking for a place to live. And what happened is I find I found someone who wants to move out. Okay, Justin wants to move out, and Justin wanted somebody to take over the lease. To take over the lease, why? Because his lease, I believe, he had three. Four months to go, like his lease, we had four months to go, okay? And he needed someone to take over the lease, but he had to get the landlord permission. He had the landlord permission. So simply put, the landlord told him, I will discharge you from the lease if you find someone that will take over your duties. And I was happy to do it because I needed a place to live. I was like, okay, no problem. This is what innovation is. In innovation, all three parties has to agree. I had to agree. Justin had to agree and the landlord had to agree. And this is not a discharge by operation of law. This is discharge by agreement. Basically, we all agreed upon this and the landlord said, that's okay. I would let you, I, you can let go of your duties. Farhat will take over. So that's not the answer because it's not by operation of law. Accord and satisfaction. Again, this is basically also a relief, a discharge of your contractual obligation, but basically what you're doing here is you're substituting your previous performance with a new performance. Let's assume I owe you $1,000. I owe you $1,000. And this is the agreement. I have to pay you $1,000 for, for some reason. What I can do, I would say in the contract, it says I have to pay you $1,000. I'm sorry, I don't have $1,000. I can paint your home. I'm not a best painter, but I, I will try it. I can paint. I think I can do a decent job. I'm not a handy person, but I think I can paint. I can paint your home. Well, guess what? You say, yeah, that's fine. You paint my home and I will discharge you. Well, this is accord and satisfaction. I substitute my performance, my original performance with another new performance. So I get discharge of my contractual duties, but not by operation of law because we agreed upon it. Okay. So B is out because it's not by operation of law. So if we stop here, a and B could be answers, could be correct answers. But by operation of law, we're going to see what that means. Okay, so the first two is by a new agreement, basically. Anticipatory repudiation. Bas what does that mean? It means I'm I told I saw I signed the contract and I told you in advance. Look, I'm going to breach the contract. Well, if I say so, will I be discharged of my contractual duties? Absolutely not. 
<laughs> guess what? I'm going to be in some legal trouble. So that's definitely out. By process of elimination, B is the answer. Impossibility of performance. Now, there's two types of impossibility of performance here. They did not specify them, but the fact that it's impossibility of performance, it will discharge you by operation of law. There is what's something called subjectivity and objectivity. Subjectivity uh, impossibility of performance means it's difficult for you to perform, but you, nevertheless, you could still perform. Objectivity performance, it means you cannot perform in fact. Um, let's assume you promise to, to deliver uh, 2,000 pounds of apples, 2,000 pounds of apples from your orchard. Guess what? You signed the contract, told them I will deliver all of this by August. Okay? August, yeah, let's see, August 2020. Okay, and you sign the contract and they paid you. That's it. You have a valid contract. You cannot get out of it. Now, what happened is this. Here comes the winter of 2020 and something happened. The weather was bad and you could not deliver 2,000 pounds of apple because your orchard did not produce 2,000 pounds of ap uh, apples. Okay, are you discharged of your contractual agreement? Well, it's not your fault. It's the weather. Well, you are still responsible because now you're supposed to go somewhere else and get the 2,000 pounds. You're supposed to satisfy the performance. Well, it's it's not your fault. Nevertheless, it's it, you still have to perform. Okay? Let's assume you sign a contract to sell. Let's assume just for the sake of illustration, um, you wanted to sell uh, a metal, a real metal, okay? A real metal that you purchase. It's an antique metal. It's an antique Olympic metal that's unique. Okay, I just made this up. It's a medal. It's an antique medal from the 1932 Olympics. Who cares? From the 1932 Olympics. Now, what happened is you signed the contract, but the night before you deliver, the medal was actually stalling. The medal was actually stalling. If that's the case, if the medal was stalling, then you cannot perform because the medal is so unique that you cannot get another one. It just it's it's unique. The the fact that it's unique, you can get another one. So under those circumstances, you are your con your contractual duties are discharged by operation of law. So that's called an object objective impossibility like you cannot really perform so the answer is d notice in this question it has four different terms and they could throw these terms on you in a different circumstances so you have to know these terms okay number seven brown cosine royals fifty thousand note to state bank oh be careful don't cosign anything a fraud a, a royal is later adjudicated mentally incompetent so they it was declared mentally incompetent what would be brown's liability on the note look i'm gonna tell you i don't even have to read the answers if you co-sign someone's loan don't ever do that you are primarily responsible okay you are primarily responsible for that loan okay so that's it you, you have to pay the bank the loan no if and buts about it a you are liable to pay the state bank on the due date of the note absolutely yes that's your that's your that's your uh that's your responsibility. I would say A. I will go with A. And I, if I don't have time, I don't keep going. But I'm going to go and just show you the other ones. Liable to pay state only if state first seek payment from royal. They don't have to seek payment from royal. They can go after you. You co-sign that loan. They can come after you. They don't have to go through royal first uh, to collect from royal. So B is out. Not liable to pay state. Yes, you are. Because royal incumbency discharged royalty as a surety. No. Just because... You know, they were discharged. It doesn't mean you were discharged. That's why they bank they ask you to to be the surety for the loan. So this way, in case they discharge royal, they come after you. So not at all. You are still responsible. Not liable to pay state unless Brown was compensated surety. No, it doesn't have to be compensated surety here. You don't, you know, um, simply put, royal doesn't have to pay you anything, that Brown anything. They don't have it. Just once you co-sign the loan, you're primarily responsible. They don't have to come and compensate you before you pay. So that's A. As I, D is out. As I told you, A is the right answer because that's it. You are responsible. So that's why in the real world, don't co-sign the loan for anyone because you are responsible. It doesn't matter whether you saw the money, spend the money, never saw the money. Don't co-sign anything. That's my advice to you because you are liable as much as the person that took the money. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the Federal Unemployment Tax Act, FUDA? So there's three incorrect and one correct. 
an employee who resigns regardless of the cause is eligible for unemployment benefits. Hopefully you don't select this answer. So simply put this answer saying if you just resign, you can collect unemployment. That's not how it works. The federal, it works when you are laid off. If it's not, if it's not within your power, but each law is different, but definitely if you resign, you don't, you don't, you can't collect. Now, somebody might email me. Yes, that's happened before as, you know, as an, as an exception. Yes, there's always exception, but that's not how it works. <laughs> the federal unemployment system, believe me, if that's the case, anyone who's, who, who is not happy at their work, they will they would resign and collect. That's not how it works. The A is out. The federal unemployment system is funded by both employer and employee. No. F federal unemployment only paid by the employer. You don't pay it. Employee don't pay it. Therefore, you just have to memorize this. B is out. The act is intended to assist workers who are permanently out of work and need assistance in supporting themselves. Is this, is this what food is? No. That's why we have something called social security for disabled people. So C is out. Okay. The unemployment insurance system is administered by the state through unemployment laws. Yes. The unemployment insurance system is administered by the states through their employment laws. That's exactly how it works. So if you lost your job, your unemployment insurance, the state pay you. The state pay you, not the food. Not none of this. None of these statements is correct. The only statement is D. So unemployment insurance is administered by the state through the employment of laws. Now the federal, they will intervene and send them some help if need be. The federal government, but they don't pay. They don't compensate the employees. The state compensate the employees. At some point, I was laid off in the state of New Jersey. I was paid not by the state but in New Jersey. I was laid off by a company in New Jersey. I collected from the state of New Jersey. I did not collect from the federal government, from FUDA. D, a partner in a general partnership is usually not entitled to which of the following. So we're talking about a general partnership. A general partnership means everybody is a general partner. Be careful when you sign up for that. They're not entitled to what? To, to participate in management? Not at all. You're a general partner. You are the manager. You are responsible for everything. To review accounting record? If you're managing, you want to review accounting record. That's out. To enter into a contract with a third party without the consent of the other partner? You are the general partner. You can do that. Basically, a general partner, it's like you are your own entrepreneur. So by the process of elimination, D is the answer to be liable only for personal negligence. Guess what? No, you are liable for everyone, not only yours. You are liable for personal negligence, whether it's yours or the other partners. Once you are partner in that partnership, you have to, you have to be careful because you are you have to be careful because you don't have that protection. You don't have that protection. Which of the following statements is correct? So one statement is correct regarding a shareholder's right to inspect the corporate books and record. Okay. The right is an absolute right. Well, once you see those answers, like on the extreme, think about it. If you're a shareholder, right? Which I, I own stocks in Apple. I own stocks in Amazon. Do you think I can inspect their books? Is this an absolute right? Absolutely not. Okay. Is condition upon the demanding shareholder at least $5,000 worth of stocks? Come on. So, so, um, no. So if you, if you own more than 5,000, that's like, no, that's also, you should, if you think about it, it's wrong. So we're, we're down to 50-50. Requires that the demand to inspect for a proper purpose. If there's a proper purpose, yes, if there's a proper purpose, you can request. Let's look at D. Exist only when fraud or illegality is alleged. If that's the case, you would hire an auditor, you and other shareholders, to, to perform an audit for fraud. But D is not the answer. So simply put, you cannot just inspect the books um, uh, for uh, for personal reasons, like you want to know how much money they are making this quarter, maybe to buy the stocks or anything like this. But if there's a proper purpose under certain circumstances, maybe a court order, it's possible. So so keep let's keep it here for a proper for a proper purpose. You can you can demand to inspect the books. So basically, in the next session, we would look at additional questions. Uh, again, go to my website. I have hundreds of questions worked like this, as well as multiple choice, true, false notes, PowerPoint slides, all sorts of resources that's going to help you pass the CPA exam. You're going to invest in your CPA once in your lifetime. Do it properly. Subscribe to my subscribe to my service. It's a minimal amount for a great investment. Good luck. Study hard. I'm always here to help you.